every bullet has its billet, renowned wargamer Barry Hilton offers a wargaming guide to the late 17th century. His chosen format is a glossy magazine-style book of 124 pages, broken down into nine sections. With Hellion's usual high-quality production, Barry's authoritative and knowledgeable text, and lots of colourful wargame pictures, this slim volume hits the target dead on. Straight off the bat, the author dispatches the elephant in the room. What late 17th century warfare? Perhaps you thought that nothing worth wargaming happened between the end of the Thirty Years' War in 1648 and Marlborough's string of spectacular victories at the start of the next century. You would be wrong. And Barry takes us through a list of interesting wars. The Anglo-Dutch Wars, French Wars against the Netherlands, wars in Central Europe of various sizes, lots of fighting involving Ottomans, the Monmouth Rebellion, a couple of smaller affrays in Scotland and Ireland, the Nine Years' War, trips to India, the Caribbean and North America, and not to forget a plethora of naval actions. Hilton writes neat summaries of all these and includes a further reading section at the end of the book for deeper research. With all that wrapped up, he gets down to gaming. We are initially introduced to the soldiers that we hope to emulate. These are first considered generically, uniforms, weapons and flags, types of soldiers and how they deployed and fought. Then the book digs into the main protagonists, highlighting their particular traits and how to organise and paint them. Denmark, England, France, the German states, the Holy Roman Empire, Jacobites, the Ottomans, Russia, the Italian states, Spain, Sweden and the United Provinces, with the naval forces helpfully added for each of these states. How to wargame all this is next on the agenda. Battles on land and sea are surveyed, pointing out the vagaries of warfare in this period, particularly the blunder-rich tactical environment that adds to your wargaming fun. The author stresses the rough and tumble nature of the battles, emphasising their essence over fiddly technicalities. To his credit, Barry does not push any particular set of rules, favouring the gaming experience whatever you want to play. In conjunction with that, we move on to building and using a force. Three types of engagement can be fought, skirmish, small battle and big battles. What scales to use and how to get them onto the table. For skirmish, Barry does push his Donnybrook rules, though why not, they're excellent. Small battles are for 4 to 12 units, while larger engagements may contain dozens of units. The author notes that compromise between gaming and historical reality is essential to make war games work. In amongst this are discussions on unit sizes and basing. The author puts these same considerations into place when promoting naval warfare. The ship models here are jaw-dropping. He had some scenarios for naval and land actions complete with maps and orders of battle. Practical wargaming is at the heart of this book, therefore the inclusion of a troubleshooting guide is very useful, covering such things as how many flags to use, how pikes are represented, hats and lots more besides. Two brief chapters follow on how to paint soldiers and ships, and then we close with a brief guide to gaming resources and the aforementioned section on further reading. Every Bullet Has Its Billet is a delight from start to finish. Barry Hilton's enthusiasm for this period shines through and his argument for playing late 17th century warfare is compelling and exceptionally well presented. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.